It is said that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. This is the story of a person who epitomizes the saying. This is the story of Nalini Jamila. I was born in a village in a middle class family. My father was an ex-army man. My mother had a job in a local spinning mill. When my father began to dabble in communism, my mother lost her job and we were plunged into poverty. I wanted to study. I dreamt of a bright future. My childhood was one of unfulfilled dreams. At the age of 9, I started working to help feed my family. I started wearing a lungi and shirt when I went to work. Wearing a skirt would make me look a child and that would get me less wages. I was fond of my daily trips to the working place. There was a lake on the way and coconut groves next to it. It was fun walking along the lake and playing in the water. My timings were from 6 in the morning to 6 at dusk. It would be dark when I returned. There was a coconut grove along the lake where there would be rowdy groups assembled playing cards. If one were alone, they would try to grope you. To avoid that, one had to run or move in groups. <laughs> I worked hard and earned well but that did not put an end to our bad times Being a housemaid in a big house was considered a better option Food was good and there were no heavy loads to carry I was a maid at Advocate Balaton's house with such a hope of a better life My job was to take care of the children there It was a happy time for me full of laughter and play and children one day a guest came to the house a school teacher called ita marsh his young son was with him he came down and asked me to get a glass of water to his father I went to him with the glass of water. He took the glass from me and tried to catch me in his arms. I resisted and somehow managed to escape. Itta amasha pidicha vannu. Itta amasha pidicha vannu. Aa shabdam ende kaadugalil mulangi. I decided to quit being a maid and be a land laborer. I was grown up enough by then. But that too, I had trouble. The supervisors had roaming hands. They would grab, grope and pretend to stumble against you. If you allowed all that, you would be better paid. So I suffered such minor businesses in silence. I wanted to make more money to make my family richer. I did make more money and managed to get my family into better times. Nalini's life at this time entered a phase that can best be described as stormy. There was trouble at home because she supported her brother in a marriage of his choice. Nalini was beaten up and thrown out of the house by her father. Where could she go?
She had many acquaintances, co-workers, men who tried to gain her favor by honeyed words. A face arose from among those crowding her mind, Chandran. He was a laborer in a sand quarry. She went to the riverside in search of Chandran. He was not there. But she met Subramaniam, his co-worker. She had to tell him the details. She needed shelter. She had no option but to follow him. Nalini started living with Subramaniam. People assumed they were husband and wife, and so they became a couple. Once in a while, his sister and mother would come to make trouble. She suffered everything in silence. She wanted to face life bravely, confront it. It was six years of misery. Subramaniam then died of cancer. bring my children up properly. My mother-in-law started making demands. She asked to be paid an expense of 5 rupees per day. Divasam anjiru vachu kodukana manna na amma ayamma varayinna du. Kooli panikki vayal randre rupaya gittu. Endu pani irthala na anjiru vachu gittu. One of my friends introduced me to Rosechi, working in Trishur town. Nalini soon found out how it works.
The mother in her was pained, but she was forced to take that decision. She did make an effort to lead an ordinary life. She married twice, and then Nalini became Nalini Jamila. Her life is a sketch of a free individual who grows from strength to strength, fired by the struggle in her soul. We see a womanly spirit that gains its vitality through sacrifice, suffering all the taunts and mockings of society, yet empowering her fellow beings through it. When an educated, so-called cultured and well-exposed person does it this way, there are no complaints and no one has the guts to complain. When a poor woman does what she can to feed a hungry family, who has the right to blame her? She does not steal or commit a robbery. She does not compel anyone to come her way. On the contrary, the rich find their way to her door. They have the money and they need the pleasures that their wives cannot give them. If a woman sacrifices her body to make them happy, how can she be the person in the wrong? Her instrument in making a living and making others happy is her body. In the US, educated young women trade their body to multinational corporations to exhibit their advertisements and use the money to pay their university fees. They stamp logos of birth control pills on their foreheads for money. Even the so-called respected media uses a woman's body as a major selling point. Nalini has travelled a tough road to reach this point. Her life has been an experiment, pure maternal instinct experimenting with fire. She stood near the Trishur bus stand, clinging to Rosa Chechi, feeling very tense. A police officer was giving a party. You should go there. Rosa Chechi tried to put some courage in her. A police jeep stopped in front of them and sped away with Rosa Chechi and Nalini. We were taken to Ramanilayam, a VIP guest house in Trishur. It was my first experience. Seated on the bed, I thought of my children. The door then opened and he came in, a handsome man. One day to the body then a while. Chiri Kiruna. He poured out a glass of liquor and held it out to me. Pidikido. I forgot myself for a while. It was a night of pleasure. The police jeep returned and took me back to town.
As soon as I was dropped downtown, another jeep rode itself to a stop in front of me. A policeman, shouting abuse, dragged me inside. The beating started as soon as I reached the police station. They hit me on the soft underside of my feet. I cried out in pain and anger. Hey, the dame who slept with the boss. I heard a murmur amongst the police officials there. Soon, a higher ranked person came in. and the beating stopped. But then, it was his turn to stake claim for that night. I suffered a lot. I was lonely. I felt hated and cheated. The men, they would pretend to be decent and offer me money for my services. But they would send me back without a single paisa, empty-handed. Sometimes, it would be one person who would come. It would end up in an orgy with several of his friends. I had to yield to a large group of people sometimes. There was one fellow who pretended to be my lover. Just when I was about to yield to him, a gang of ten odd people arrived. There were certain locations, old family houses with impoverished interiors. People with money would come and go. A board with the name of a company would be displayed to keep away doubts. I too became a member of a company house as it was called. It was safe and free. There was nothing to fear. No beatings, no police, no rowdies. I met a lot of people. I went round with whom I liked. I acquired a value where I as a commodity could deal with my buyers on equal footing. I was a free bird. I went out to eat and see movies. I grew confident that no one could interfere with my freedom. Nalini went through this phase of her life with a unique courage. Life taught her very precious lessons. Her new friends gave her fresh knowledge about and a novel outlook towards life. The meeting with a UN official was an unforgettable experience. He fired her imagination and boosted her individuality. He told her about her fellow beings living in the midst of misery and trouble. She could do something to make their lot better, to make them free and safe. She could teach them the lessons of survival that she had learned. Nalini was slowly donning the mantle of a leader and it came to her naturally. Nalini Jamila's third phase of life was her role as liberator of her fellow workers who were constantly hunted by society. Jwala Mukhi is an organization made by a group of women for their survival. When Nalini reached the Jwala Mukhi office, a discussion was on about AIDS and other problems of sex workers. Where are they? 
എന്നാലും പോലീസ് പിടിക്കുന്നു പീഡിപ്പിക്കുന്നു പണം തട്ടിയെടുക്കുന്നു പിന്നെ മക്കളാണ് ഗുണ്ടകളെ കൊണ്ട് വെറുതെ മുട്ടി അവൻ ഭയങ്കര ശല്യക്കാരനാണ് അപ്പോൾ കയ്യിലുള്ള കാശുകളെല്ലാം പിടിച്ച് പറിക്കും ഇതിനെല്ലാം എന്താ പരിഹാരം പോലീസ് പിടിച്ചു അഡ്വക്കേറ്റിനെ കണ്ടു കോടതിയിൽ ഫൈൻ അടിച്ചു എന്നൊന്നും പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് കാര്യമില്ല ഫൈൻ അടയ്ക്കണമെങ്കിൽ അഡ്വക്കേറ്റിനെ കാണുന്നതിന് നമ്മൾ എന്ത് കുറ്റവും ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഒരു കുറ്റവും ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല ആ നിലയ്ക്ക് ആരെ നമ്മൾ പേടിക്കണം കോടതിയിൽ ഇത് പറഞ്ഞാണ് പറയുന്നത് Nalini Jamila thus started appearing on public stages. She became the voice for a society which included her, perhaps as the voice of another society rejected by conventional people. ഉപദ്രവിക്കാൻ പാടില്ല നമുക്കും അവകാശങ്ങളുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ മനുഷ്യരാണ് എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ മാത്രം കുറ്റകാരാവുന്നത് ഞാൻ പറയുന്നത് തെറ്റാണെങ്കിൽ ഇവിടെ വന്നിരുന്നത് വെളിപ്പെടുത്തുക